Hello and welcome. In today's short video, I'll be taking a look at ServiceNow's Array Utils API and some of the methods we can use to make our lives that little bit easier. So what exactly is the Array Utils API? So essentially, it's just a script included in ServiceNow, which it comes with the instance, so th there's no secret to it. And it gives us a bunch of methods that we can use um, instead of having to write lots of code. It, it makes our, um, our code neater. Um, it means we're not um, writing uh, duplicate code. And it means we can just use what's already there, right? So if we just go to my instance, so you can see my instance looks fresh. It looks new. It looks nice. This is San Diego. If you haven't seen my videos on San Diego yet, please check out the channel. Um, I've got a few on there. So go and check them out. Anyway, so I've um, already favorited script includes, so I'm gonna to go to there. And if we just have a quick look, we're not gonna go through it. I just wanna show you that there's no hidden mystery to this. So this is a script include here. Um, and if you, you, you can read code, then obviously we can go through and see what each of the methods are doing. What I did wanna show you is if we go to the doc site, they have a nice handy document. Hey, look at that. Um, so in this document, it explains all the methods that we've got in the Arrays um, Utils API. We're not going to go through every single one on this video. I'm just going to pick out perhaps two, maybe three, that I've seen in my time as a consultant. Um, but I've seen them written in different ways. So I've seen people uh, write their own functions to uh, provide the same outcome as what's already there. So I'm doing this video to... Hopefully, hopefully, when people are Googling how to do something, and let's face it, we all do that, right? I'm hoping that they'll land on this video and find out and say, hey, this is an easy way we can do this. Um, rather than you sometimes end up on Stack Overflow, um, you know, find some random forum. And they give you a long-winded way of writing code. Um, so I just wanted to do this video. And also, I like doing stuff that reminds me as well. Um, so it's, it's kind of my, like my uh, personal code repository. Um, so anyway, let's continue. So this is just the, the document site, and I'm going to drop um, all this information in the description anyway. So I'm going to pick three methods from the API to play around with and, and show you. Um, and I'm picking these three because these are the three that I see um, used in different ways across the platform that, that I've seen over the last um, uh, 10 or so years. So I wanted to show you these, um, and I'm hoping they, they're going to be helpful for you. Now, I'm going to do this in a background script. Um, I'm going to do it because it's quick and easy, and you can see instant results on screen. Um, if you don't use background scripts to do things like this, to play around, to um, you know, to, to work functions out before you start committing them into to scripts, maybe, um, I'd suggest having a look. Um, I can understand that people are perhaps a bit daunting, uh, find it a bit daunting, a bit nervous about doing it. Um, if you're doing it PDI, though, um, have, a, have a play around. So I'm going to do that background script. I'm going to open mine in a separate tab. The reason I'm opening mine in a separate tab is because I have um, something called SNUtils. It's a Chrome extension in, um, and it allows me to see the output on the same page rather than Annoyingly, if you use background scripts normally, it, it kind of puts it on the other page. You have to go backwards to see the script. Hopefully, you know what I'm talking about. SNUtils, though, I've seen it having quite a lot of hype on LinkedIn at the minute, quite rightly so. It's great. If you haven't got it, definitely get it installed on your Chrome um, and have a play. It's absolutely wonderful. Right, so the first one I want to do is, um, I'm going to refer to my notes. Um, before we go into that, I'll tell you the three that we're going to mess with. Uh, we're going to look at contains. So we're going to look at, well, we've got an array. Um, we want to find if it contains a certain value. We're going to look at unique. This is one I see a lot of, where you've got um, one array. It's got multiple things within it, and you want to just output the unique things. Right? Perfect example is, let, let's say you've got a, a list of incident numbers, and you've got the same number in twice, but you just want a list of all unique um, numbers. There's that one. And then we're going to look at something called union. So that takes in two arrays, um, and it outputs the unique values of those two. So it will combine the two arrays, and then it'll output um, the unique values for them. Um, you'll, you'll get the point. We'll get there. Right. 
So the first one I'm going to do, I'm going to do some copy and paste. I'm going to cheat to try and make it quicker for you. But I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do it in sequence. So we've got first thing I'm going to do is assign um, the array utils uh, API script include this thing. Um, assign it to a variable, and I'm going to call it um, array util. That's aptly named. One thing to 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 note on this though. If you're using it from another scope that isn't global, we need to um, add in the, the the global at the, the start of it. So global dot array um, util API uh, from uh, the scope tab, and it tells you here. Look on the script include. Okay, so we've done that. We now need an array. So I'm cheating. I'm just I'm just I'm just hard coding. Don't tell anyone I've done that, but that's what I'm doing. <clears throat> so. Normally, what you might do is, is um, I don't know, do a glide query um, and get back a bunch of numbers, right, and put them in an array. For this, I'm just putting them here in here for simplicity. I've just hard coded the numbers. These aren't real incident numbers, right? But I'm just hard coding them in. So hopefully, um, you'll get the idea. So we've now got our array one. So we've declared um, array util, which is um, equal to the script include API, and we've got the the array here. The next thing we want to do is we're going to print out um, a contain. So we want to search for if this array contains something. So in this one, I just need to change this. Here we go. What we're saying is we're going to print out at the bottom here. We're going to print out and say this array, this one up here, contains this number. Okay. So we're putting that here. We do that by saying array utils, which is on line one look, dot method contains, which you'll find in the script include. And we're going to pass in the array itself, which is this, and we're going to search for that value there. Okay. We'll do that and it will return true. Okay. So it's a boolean return, true or false. If we were to put in, I don't know, something like that, it'll return false because that number does not exist in there. So that is really quick. Hey, that's one line. That's one line of code that says, does this value exist in that array? Brilliant. That's the first one. And I see different ways of doing this. Uh, index of includes. I've seen that before. Um, but that's one line. Okay. The next one I'm going to do, and I'm, I'm going to keep everything on screen, actually, I think. So let's um, put that back to where it was. <clears throat> the next thing I'm going to do is unique. First of all, I'm just going to put that there, just in case you um, are looking at this in terms of a code snippet, or you, you know you found this and you're doing work and you want to be um, see things on screen. I'm going to leave it on. The next thing I want to do is find a unique value. Okay. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to look. Um, Array utils, which we declared on line one, um, dot unique, which is the method we want to use, and we're going to pass in the array itself. So it's going to return an, ar an array with unique values. So at the minute, if you look at the array on line two, they're all unique, right? 111, 222, 333, 444, 555. But if we were to change 555 to 111, hopefully you would agree that we've got one, two, three, four unique values, and this one appears twice. Okay. <clears throat> so now when we run that, we have this array has unique values, 222, 333, 444, 111. We don't have INC 111 twice. So it's given us back unique values. Uh, where have I seen this before and where have I used this before? Well, when I've had to do perhaps glide queries and return sys IDs from one function in a script include, sys IDs from another function in a script include. And before I do something with those, I want to perhaps, um, uh, you know, make sure they're, they're, they're unique values. Um, having said that, I may use the next function, actually, that we're going to go through the next method. So let's have a look at the next one. The next one, as I said, is union. So this is about getting two arrays, deduping them making them unique um, and outputting that unique array. So 
Right, this is what we're going to do. So, I'm just going to change this a little bit. You're seeing me do this live. Well, not live because you're watching a video, but you get the point. Um, so what this is going to do, again, I'm, I'm just putting this text just um, on the message so it makes more sense at the bottom. So we're using array utils again, line one. So again, we're, we're still using this script include. Um, and we're going to use the union method. <clears throat> and the union method, if you were to look at the doc site um, that I showed you before, this thing, it explains what parameters we need to pass. So it's quite simple, right? So we're going to pass it in array one, which is this one up here. We're going to pass it in array two. <clears throat> and the output will be a concatenation of those arrays, and they're going to be unique. So what I think we should do is just for simplicity, I'm going to create array two down here. Uh, two, 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 three, 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 four, four, four. I don't know. Let's put five, five, five in there. Maybe let's put ooh, six, six, six. And let's leave it like that. So we've got one, one, one now appears three times. One, two, three, two, two, two appears twice across the two arrays. Six, six, six is unique. 555 five, five is unique. So let's do that. Okay. So now, now we see this array is a combination of two arrays and makes it unique. 333, 444, 111, 222, 666, 555. Brilliant, hey? So that's uh, where we've got two arrays. Again, uh, my example before, two arrays of sys IDs. We don't know if they're unique or not. We can throw them into this union method, put them both in, and it'll output um, a unique array for us to then do with uh, whatever we like. And so that's it for today's video. So if you like what you've seen um, and you find it useful, or perhaps you will find it useful going forward, maybe in months or years, then hit the like button. Um, if you haven't yet subscribed, please consider subscribing. It really does give me some motivation to keep going. Um, if you want any more information or if there's any other video ideas you've got, drop some comments in. Some of the comments are actually quite funny. They make a good read. So please keep those up, guys. Um, they're entertaining. Um, so, yeah, so that's it for today. And I'll uh, see you uh, on another video. Take care.